The history of Bharatiya women is not about just dowries or sati and cries and helplessness and the beating husband and so on. Of course, there could be such sad incidents happening here and there. They are isolated incidents. But the complete story is about also the great women achievers whom unfortunately we have forgotten to enlist in the textbooks. These need to be brought out to make us proud. Okay, we have been seeing the stories, the tales, the achievements, accomplishments of many such women. So today we'll see some of the very brilliant queens of Odisha Rajya. So Odisha is one of the finest, one of the most culturally vibrant and a very, very ancient Rajya of Bharatavarsha. So in this Odisha, there was a very famous Rajavamsha called the Karavamsha. They built a beautiful Samrajya empire called the Bhauma Samrajya. In this Bhauma Samrajya, there have been almost 30 rulers of which six of them are all queens. Not just the region queens, but they are the sovereign queen models. They were chosen and they were crowned as queens uh, considering their capacity and their accomplishments. So one such very very prominent and the first queen of the Karavamsha of the Bhauma Samrajya was Tribhuvana Mahadevi Rani. She is greatly extolled, she is greatly uh, praised in most of the available documents. The most prominent of all the documents that we get about this Vamsha and this great queen is the Dhenkal uh, uh, documents where we uh, hear about her. She is praised as a great queen who had more than 100 qualities that a great Raja should possess. And she is also uh, said to have had the great Mantra Shakti, Prabhu Shakti and Utsaha Shakti. Her own successor called uh, Shiva Karadeva. He says she had all these three in a very brilliant way. Mantra Shakti is about the capacity to plan, to foresee and to implement uh, ideas in the right way and see that it helps the kingdom to bloom and boost and come up. And uh, Prabhu Shakti is of leadership to take people along, to form a team, to convince people and to get things done. It's not a joke. It's a very, very tough thing to do. And finally, Utsaha Shakti. Amidst all the woes and problems and ups and downs and failures and trials and errors and goods and bads, with all this, what is most important is the Utsaha Shakti, the never-ending enthusiasm, which can come only to a very noble soul who is selfless. So, uh, Rani Tribhuvana uh, Mahadevi had all these three qualities. Uh, this is what we, uh, we see in the documents. When the Rani's husband Shantikara uh, Deva, a very very powerful valorous king, died in a battle, Queen uh, Tribhuvana Mahadevi, she was chosen and she was crowned as the queen, the sovereign queen by all the people. And uh, she, the many qualities that she had, some of them was she was a Pitru Bhakta, she had great regard for parents and she was a Parama Vaishnavi and she was an excellent administrator. And during her administration, she is also called Mrudukara. Mrudukara means kara means tax. So she used to tax her people very lightly. The taxes were very light, very uh, pleasant and it was not at all difficult. So people liked her for that. And although she collected very reasonable taxes, she gave back in bounty. She built many temples, many learning institutions. She gave generous donations to temples and uh, she got tanks bills and uh, built and uh, river uh, ghats built and many uh, famous uh, learning centers of Buddhist and Jain and Vaidika Paramparas built. She gave patronage to all these cults, all these systems without any partiality. Queen Tribhuvana Mahadevi was also a very powerful queen. It was during her time that there were two powerful enemies she had. That is, one is of the Palavamsha and the other was the Rashtrakuta Vamsha. And she subdued them with her very brilliant army. It seems she had an army of more than 3 lakh soldiers, of which not everybody were men, but there were also many women in her army. During uh, Rani Tribhuvana Mahadevi's time, she gave a lot of patronage to dance, music, temple constructions, Shilpakala Vidya, Shikshana, Vaidika Dharma and um, Dharmic rituals and many things and the status of women were, was very high. We all know how in the whole of Bharatavarsha, in the Sanatana society, the status of women, the freedom of women was always upheld. Till unfortunately the invaders plundered this land, they came with nothing but contempt and uh, lust for women. So the, the very uh, 
crooked, the predatory mindset of the Akramanakaras made it very unsafe for women to be socializing in the society anymore. So before that, we see how the whole of Bharata Varsha had brilliant women who were very active in the society. They would go to temples, they would walk on the streets, they would go to Gurukulas. They were educated, they would rule, they would participate in music, dance, feasts and all public celebrations. Similarly, we see in the Bhauma uh, Samrajya also where women were very active in all spheres of social life. Many of the queens who followed after Tribhuvana Mahadevi, in fact they emulated her qualities. They tried to bring out the same virtues in their lives also. We see Prithvi Mahadevi, then Bakula Mahadevi, then we have Dharma Mahadevi, Dandi Mahadevi and Gauri Mahadevi and so on. Of these, the last of them that is uh, the Dandi Mahadevi, who was also called Dharma Mahadevi. She was uh, a very, very famous queen who also was known for her brilliance in war, in administration. So she also had the titles like Parma Maheshwari, Parma Bhattarika, Raja Rajadi, Parameshwari and so on. She was also very generous, very talented, very learned and she was a great benefactor of her people. The inscriptions describe how during her times, there were lots of precious gems pearls and diamonds who used to be sold everywhere. So there was abundance of wealth during her time. So Odisha was ruled by very such great queens during the Bhauma Samrajya, somewhere between the 8th and the 10th century. Then we see the Shailo Bhava Vamsha, another uh, great clan that ruled uh, Odisha. Although not all of the, the queens of this uh, particular clan were rulers, they were excellent uh, supporters to their kings and they were very good social workers they used to and they were very talented dancers and musicians and learned queens very scholarly and they built many temples they did lot of social service work they gave generous donations they got temples built roads built river ghats built and they encouraged education they patronized education and so on some other very popular queens are pallavi duruva of Koratpur uh, uh, region, then we have the Kalinga Rani that is Adi Rani, then we have Sumitra Devi of Mayur Bhanj who was supposed to be very intelligent and very valorous also and then we have this Rani Shuka Devi of uh, the 18th century who was uh, very valorous, she belonged to a place called Bankighar and she protected her uh, territories and uh, she was a very valorous queen. These queens were rich, talented, powerful and in power they had authority but they didn't while away their time just in beauty cosmetics and in front of the mirror or just sleeping on their coaches uh, no they were not that kind of a cleopatra models the bharatiya queens particularly the sanatana queens are full of tyaga they spent their days they spent their time their adhikara their money wealth everything by serving the society they used to build tanks and temples and give donations when their husbands or the kings the men folk were usually away safeguarding the territories they would take care of all the administration so there are hundreds and thousands of inscriptions thousands of documents and even living traditions and sculptural documents numismatic data archaeological evidences which tell us how our ancient queens or medieval queens uh, not even queens just even common women were very active in the social sphere in the public sphere in the political sphere in the artistic sphere like how they used to be very participant in par with the men folk in all these areas so we should be very proud that we have such a beautiful history wherein men and women of all regions of Bharata Varsha have contributed immensely to make us proud, make this country very vibrant culturally. The spectacular culture that we boast of today of Bharata Varsha is not just, it's not just come to us like that. It's come because of the hard work, dedication and sacrifice, continuous unbroken contributions of all such great people. So in some of the other episodes, future episodes, we'll see about, we learn more about some other queens of some other region of Bharatavarsha. Namaste.